the raise your hand function and uh, we'll get to your questions. Go ahead, coach. Well, as I said, after the game, this was a really good win for our team. Um, uh, I think a lot of players really had to step up in this game uh, and they did a very, very good job of um, overcoming adversity. I thought the players were all in in spirit on the sidelines, uh, had good enthusiasm, which is something you need when you're playing on the road. Uh, I thought we did a lot of things better. Uh, we made some explosive plays on offense. We had good balance. Um, you know, defensively, we got off the field on third down, stopped the run a little better. Um, still gave up a couple explosive plays and, you know, had a couple ball security issues on offense, but uh, things that we need to clean up. And I think, you know, this time of year uh, is when, you know, players have to, you know, choose to do the things they need to do to continue to improve and get better and create the right habits uh, in practice so that you can uh, not develop the kind of habits that start showing up in the game uh, that are not, you know, necessarily uh, positives for your performance. And um, nobody feels great this time of year. Uh, so you got to kind of choose uh, your energy and let your feelings follow that. And uh, that's something that, you know, we're certainly trying to get our players to understand and be able to, to do. Um, you know, Mississippi State, Mike Leach is, uh, everybody knows about, you know, the kind of offense they run, uh, very pass oriented uh, offense, a lot of spread formations, um, do a really good job of executing it. But defensively, uh, they've really played well this year. They're one of the top defensive teams, uh, you know, in the league, um, play hard, very physical, got a little different kind of scheme. So this is really going to be kind of a little bit different kind of preparation for us on both sides of the ball relative to what we normally see. Uh, so it'll be very challenging for the players. And uh, we definitely need to do a great job of getting them prepared for what they're going to see in this week's game. Okay, we'll start with Charlie Potter. Hey, Coach, just want to ask you how you would evaluate your pass rush in the first five games. Uh. Well, I, I, I think, you know, you guys probably look at pass rush as to how many sacks you get. Um, I, I don't think we've had really good pass rush, but I also think that, um, you know, when people seven man protect, uh, which is what they did a lot in the last game, you're not going to get a lot of pass rush with four guys rushing. Um, so um, I think sometimes it's relative to um, who you're playing against. Uh, I definitely think this is an area that we need to improve uh, and certainly an area that we're going to work hard on because it's going to be important in this game. We'll go to Brett Hudson with Tuscaloosa News. Uh, Coach Slade was a very versatile athlete coming out of high school. What what made him fit best at, at slot, and, and why do you think he, he fits that position? Well, Slade's really quick. Um, a lot of guys like Slade, you know, become very effective – slot kind of players because they're quick out of a break. They got good initial quickness, really good hands, uh, very smart uh, and heady in terms of their instincts and their uh, ability to make quick decisions. So uh, that's something that fit well for him. Uh, I know he played quarterback. He played all over the place in high school. Um, but so, but he's done a good job. He did a good job in the game. And uh, he's one of the guys that I've really was referring to when I said a lot of guys had to step up, you know, I guess it's a good lesson for young players that, you know, you're one play away from being in the game and that's why it's important for you to prepare the way you need to prepare. So, um, but Slade's got some maturity and has some experience and uh, really stepped up well for us in the game. Okay. We'll go to Michael Casagrande with AL.com. It's wonder how have you seen Max ability to handle uh, adversity? Uh, how's that evolved over the years with him? Uh, Max has shown a lot of maturity in the way that he's played uh, so far. You know, this year, I think the more experience he gets, the more confidence that he has. Um, you know, we, we've got things that uh, we let, we left some plays on the field, I think, on third down in the game uh, that we certainly need to improve on and work on because that's been something that's been, you know, a really positive thing for us. But uh, Max has been able to stay steady. You know, he stays in a good place. Uh, keeps his eyes in the right place, keeps making good choices and decisions. And uh, I think that's when he's most productive. And he's done that on a very consistent basis, you know, all year long. We'll go to Dennis Dodd. 
Yeah, Nick, what are the expectations for Slade? No, no one can, you know, replace the guy that might be the best receiver in the country. Well, I, I don't think – I think you said it. <laughs> you can't replace a guy like Jalen Waddle in terms of what his ability is, and uh, it's no different than, you know, losing Allen Iverson if you're, you know, guy scores 30, 40 points a game. Uh, he's, you know, that kind of impact player. Um, but we can do the things that he can do well, uh, and he doesn't need to be anybody but himself. Uh, and we don't we don't put expectations on him. We just want him to be the best player that he can be, relative to what he can do. And uh, how can we get some of our other players at the receiver position to step up, uh, and also do some things that they're capable of doing uh, that would help us be able to continue to uh, have success. Uh, with the receivers that we have uh, and the passing game that we've had so far and the balance that we try to create with that passing game on offense. Cecil Hurd. Uh, Coach, we haven't had a chance to talk to you since Saturday, and I was just curious if you had had the opportunity to talk to Jalen and, and what he said to you and what the doctors have said to you. Well, uh, I did talk to him after the game. Um, you know, they, they did the surgery – that night, uh, he's been in the hospital since. Uh, he's been pretty groggy. He was going to come and see me today, but uh, he just got back, and um, I'm probably going to talk to him later today or tomorrow. But uh, the surgery was very, very successful. The long-term prognosis for uh, his surgery is very good. Uh, Derrick Henry had this surgery here. Kenyon Drake had this surgery here. Um, you know, it's it's a difficult timetable. Uh, to, to know when a guy can come back from something like this. Uh, but uh, so th 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 that's something that's going to be ongoing, but um, probably six to eight weeks before, you know, he can really even start, you know, real heavy rehab, then, you know, relative to your position, how fast can you come back after that is really, really up in the air. We'll go to Tony Sakalas. Nick, we've seen, uh, we saw Jav Javon Baker make his debut the other the other day. What does he bring to the offense, and is he a guy, one of those guys you were talking about that could kind of step in at, at receiver? Yeah, Javon is a big catch radius. He's got really good hands, a uh, uh, very physical player. Um, so um, he, I, I think, with our young guys, the challenge with them has been, you know, you guys have to be able to go out there and know what to do, do it with confidence, and get some consistency and performance. They're all capable, uh, and those are the guys that we need to show some maturity now and being able to prepare for the game, know what to do, go out there and execute it. So, um, you know, we can utilize some of the talents that they have, and he's certainly one of the guys that could help us do that. We'll go to Mike Rodak with AL.com. Similar to the last question, but uh, Bryce and, and uh, Trey Sanders also saw some time on Saturday. Just what did you see out of them uh, when they were on the field? I thought Bryce did a, a good job of handling the situation that he was in. Um, and I, we really wanted to try and continue to try to get him some experience. Uh, I think he showed a lot of improvement from the first game that he played in up at Missouri in terms of his poise and um, made a couple third down conversions that, you know, showed a lot of poise. Um, you know, Trey Sanders played well in the game, uh, was explosive, had some good runs, uh, somebody that we're going to have to continue to utilize his abilities, I think, now and some other phases of the game as well. Go to James Ogletree. Yeah, Coach, um, it's been pointed out the difference between how effective defenses are at stopping Mississippi State in their air raid versus when they play zone as opposed to man. Why do you think that is such a strong uh, or such a stark difference um, when playing zone seems to be more effective there? Well, I think their concepts on offense are, you know, this is uh, one of the, I don't know what, what the best word to describe it. I don't, I don't know. It's not really exotic, I, but it's really, really, uh, a good system in terms of how they spread you on the field, the pattern concepts that they use. Um, and uh, I think that, you know, they do a really good job of coaching the quarterback when it's man to man and when it's zone uh, and how to take advantage of that. Uh, I think that, um, you know, people who have played really good zone against them break on the ball. I mean, 
you've got to tackle well in space when you do that. You've got to break on the ball um, and you've got to force them to sort of take some of the shorter throws and not make explosive plays on you, which they, they've shown the capability of doing when, you know, you're playing kind of man to man kind of concept. So, um, um, I, I can't tell you exactly why, uh, that is, but when you're that spread out on the field and, um, they've got five guys going out for a pass all the time and you're horizontally stretched like you are, um, you know, when you play man to man, if somebody gets beat, you got an issue. And when you play zone, you got a better chance to play inside out and break on the ball. Okay, we'll finish up with Steven. Hey, coach, when Byron Young enters the game, he has a lot of energy, makes plays in the backfield. What does he bring to a growing defensive line? Well, Byron has really played well for us this year. Uh, I think he's uh, lost some weight. He's got his quickness back. Uh, he, he, shows a little more uh, movement ability than some of the other guys that we have. And, um, you know, I, I really do like the way he played, especially in this last game. Uh, so we certainly need some help, especially with, you know, LeBron Ray still very questionable as to when he's going to come back. Uh, you know, Byron, you know, gives us a little mobility that we're certainly going to need, especially in a game like this. All right, coach. That's all we got. Thank you. Thank you.